Okay, so welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to Entree Chats, where we chat about stuff. And today we're chatting about camera stuff. My favorite topic. Now, before we even get this party started, let's just all agree that as mutual creators of content that we respect one another. And in the comments, we will not call anybody stupid, any curse words or any of the like. And we can rationally discuss this conversation. Now, with that being said, uh, I'm really, I've been really thinking the past couple days about what Nikon has released in their Z6 and Z7 cameras, which is their first full frame cameras. Now, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of stuff going on in the YouTube community right now when it comes to this sole conversation of the topic and uh, as far as on the internet and all kinds of stuff. Now, the camera industry is something I'm relatively new to, as in less than five years. And that is something that I'm very, very, uh, very, I really, I'm very, very excited about and something I have a strong affinity for. Um, you all know, I love my Panasonic GA5. I absolutely love it. Uh, but there are limitations that it has. I'm really finding that I'm, I'm really loving the M50 and it has worked out to be my vlogging camera and to do stuff like this. And I'm really loving it for what it is in the way that I want to use it. Now, it has limitations <laughs> that I've talked about, fussed about, yelled about on my channel, talked about Canon bad about, especially this camera, it's M50. And then I want to buy the daggone thing. Okay. So with that being said, Nikon released the Z6, Z7 camera on the 23rd or so of August this month. And I've been kind of taking the pulse of what everybody's been saying, reading comments, going back and forth in uh, different videos. And it's just interesting to say the least. Now, I, I try to look at these things from a business aspect. As a small business coach first and maybe, you know, a videographer of sorts second and a content creator here on YouTube, I try to look at things uh, not from an emotional aspect, even though you definitely can, you, without a shadow of a doubt, there's a strong emotion that is like people, some people are excited to just try it out, give the cameras a chance. Um, and then some people are, are just like, they're sick of Nikon. They're waiting to see what Canon does that allegedly they're supposed to announce like, uh, a full, I don't know if it's going to be a full frame mirrorless, but let's just say a mirrorless camera it could be an M5 Mark II type deal, or it could be like a G85-ish type, you know, specs as far as, uh, you know, full frame camera. So it's like a thousand dollars, 1500 or so dollars, but definitely less than $2,000. Now, everybody knows that Sony's been eating everybody's lunch and um, putting everybody on their toes, um, which is a good thing because it's good to have market competition between any subject. And the thing that I love about the camera industry and this whole world from the indie filmmakers to the photographers, to the videographers and the content creators here on YouTube and other platforms like Instagram and stuff like that, um, is that we become attached to our gear and by doing so and using our gear creatively and all kinds of stuff that, uh, we have an influence in what we want, what we need. One huge thing is a flip up or a flip out screen. Basically, this fully articulating screen, this is the bee's knees right here, okay? This is the bee's knees. I can do this and see myself. Or you can take a camera like, uh, you know, people like the Sony RX100s or whatever, and you can flip it up. This is my ZS70. I like this one. Now, at some point, I need to create content for myself, by myself, for my community, for my business. Like I'm putting together a series now. I was hoping to get the first video out today, but it's gonna take more time to edit them. But I'm doing a, a M50 series for beginners, covering all kinds of stuff and how to really get the most out of this camera. And I'm uploading it free here on YouTube. I otherwise could do this as a course, but I just wanna do it free here on YouTube. It's gonna be a 30 part, 30 day video series. So we're gonna be doing that, may just start in September and that'll give me time to do it. But the point is this, for a beginner or somebody that was where I was at when I first bought that Canon Elf point-and-shoot camera, 
the M50, I think, is perfect for that person. And good for somebody like me also that knows what I'm doing when it comes to videos, have done paid projects and all kinds of stuff when it comes to video. And I just like to vlog too. So that being said, let's get to Nikon. Let's get to the heart of the matter. Now, to make sure I stay on track, because this is my third time trying to record this video and just not get overwhelmed or just like, just to stay on track though. So I had two points, mostly just two points when it comes to this topic. Now, first thing is Nikon, I believe overall, for the overwhelming majority, the post that I felt in watching a lot of videos, listening to people's opinions on it, those that like it, those that um, like it but are disappointed with it, and those that completely feel like they dropped the ball and Nikon is embarrassing themselves. Now, I feel like overwhelming majority feels like Nikon's release of the Z6, Z7 is a disappointment. I don't blame them for feeling that way because with the amount of hype that they jump, I'm looking, I was looking forward to it. I'm honestly, I'm not interested in Nikon. There's nothing that they can release to make me interested in them. It just is not a brand that I am interested in personally, my personal opinion, my personal preferences. Um, but I think otherwise for photography, I think like the D850, I think it's one of the best cameras that probably have been made um, recently, you know what I'm saying, as a DSLR. But I think they over, uh, overwhelmingly <laughs> disappointed the current user base, people that were had switched from Nikon, that were looking to maybe potentially go back at some point once Nikon got up to par in the, the mirrorless game and um, just really released that first full frame mirrorless camera that everybody's been wanting and looking forward to them doing, but they didn't release the product or products that people were hoping, even if the Z6 still what it was and all of what it, you know, features and all that single card slot, whatever. They were at least hoping to get an A7S three type equivalent out of it and an A7R three equivalent out of the Z7 so that they can have that same feature set with the particular brand that they want. Now, the same is true of people that use Canon. I don't have any intentions of going full frame. There's really nothing really at this time in my world that, you know, makes me need or want to have full frame. I'm cool with the APS-C um, world, APS-C micro four, like I'm, I'm cool, but it's not saying I wouldn't get one maybe in the future or whatever. But again, it's having that way to grow up in the camera world and just have, you know, some, have some kind of trajectory. At least if I went to the G85, if I went from the G7 to G85, I'd go to the GH5, maybe the GH5S or GH5, whichever was I wanted to, or G9, and then go to something else. You know, I know Panasonic hopefully is gonna release something with some kind of form of good autofocus. Not a contrast based to take, but a good autofocus. I'm not gonna talk about Nikon's autofocus because I'm not familiar with it anyway. All I don't know is, is that from what I've heard, people wish that it was better and it seems like it may be. But I think as far as the feature set, that it was a disappointment, single card slot, the type of card slot, not having the, um, like the J85 has this, let's see if I can get that in the light, this down here uh, for the battery grip. Um, it's these connectors, it's a connector thing. So you can connect it to the battery grip and control like the have a shutter button and all that stuff like when you turn it this way and have one so they just said today nikon said they they're going to have a battery grip but it's not going to have the little shutter button and stuff on it and the wheel also another punch in the gut but i think they disappointed severely their user base with all that being said that's not anything that you probably don't already know second thing does it match does it actually make business sense for Nikon to have done this? My answer, my personal beliefs and thoughts, and please leave your comments down below on what you think and how you feel. I'm curious to drive some conversation here on just the general post because I know we have a lot of beginners, but then we also have, like I said, the indie filmmakers and photographers in our community too. So I'm curious to see what you guys' thoughts are here. I think, uh, does it make actual business sense for Nikon to do what they have done? From what I understand, from what I have seen and from the pulse of the community, photography, indie filmmaker community, videographer community, with what Sony has produced, I think with Panasonic's G9, especially with 
Fuji stuff that they have and they've done the um, H1 or whatever it was called um, camera but I'm not that familiar with Fuji don't hate me I'm sorry <laughs> but I think they're amazing cameras hell I was looking at the X-T100 instead of the Canon M50 but it's just the idea that you always want your brand to do the thing that you want them to do you want them to win and even you want other competition in the market just to continue to push your particular brand of choice to continue doing the stuff that you want. But does it make actual business sense for what Nikon really did? I think the answer is no. And it's like to throw up as much dust as they did and not really release the the camera that everybody was wanting and expecting them to have at least the you know SD dual card slots. Um, you know, at least, you know, it's like regardless, do a card slots or not, just something that compared to the A7 III, comparable specs, and the A7R III from Sony. We're also expecting the same stuff from Canon. We'll see in about a week or so uh, when Canon releases what they may do. They may do like a APS-C camera. I don't know. They may. They may do a full frame one that is really not too far from the M50, just a full frame version of it. They still, I bet you they're going to crop the 4K. Maybe not as severe of a crop, but they may crop it. And even if they don't, they may still do contrast something or whatever. They're gonna do something funny, watch. Just saying, they're gonna do something funny. They always do, they crop everything, everything. They're gonna crop it and they're gonna do something funny with it. I just don't know what, we'll see though. But I'm curious, but will they surprise us? I think everybody wanted to be wild and floored and like that's my camera brand that's my camera brand but they can't now they're you know and people are going hard in the comments people are going ham right now on youtube i i it's getting hard out here in these streets okay the fact that tony and chelsea northrup produced a second video to talk about the comments that was in the first video that they did for the preview of what they thought for the Z6 and the Z7 because people were going off on them and I think I think it's I think it's disrespectful that again it's like even if we differ in opinion even if we differ on how we think uh, about certain things I think it's disrespectful to think that just because somebody doesn't believe or have the perspective that you have to call them a shill or something like that I honestly don't see that of them. I don't see that of other creators that people are calling a shill, a sellout or whatever, or they prefer. I think they do make some misjudgments at times, not just like the Northrop's or whatever, but like other people in general, other creators that review stuff and stuff in this, this photography world and stuff. I think they make misjudgments at times. Of course, you have your biases that come into play when it comes to your particular brand and this and that one. That's like me saying, because I love the G85 and I enjoy it so much that the autofocus is great. I don't even recommend the G85 to nobody. I don't even recommend the G7 to nobody hardly. I ask lots of questions to see, have you had any experience in doing this stuff before you pick the G85? Because most people need the M50 or something thereabout, something like that. T7i, SL2 type stuff. I almost always recommend Canon, even when I was my most upset with the decisions that they were making. But does it make sense for Nikon to do what they did? I don't think so. I think even if they did like the Z6 still, and it, it's not quite everything of maybe what everybody wants, still do one of them for what everybody wanted. Because why ask everybody what they think? Why get surveys? Why put these cameras in photographers' hands. Why do all this stuff and all this work, research and development, stuff like that, and not do what people are saying that they want? That's like me asking you, hey, what kind of content do you want? You say, hey, we want, you know, chicken videos on, <laughs> chicken video, <laughs> chicken, like if this is like a food channel, we want tutorials on chicken, how to prepare and cook chicken, multiple different types of ways, but only chicken. We don't want beef or pork. We only want chicken. And then I turn up with a shrimp video or, you know, how to make beef brisket. And you know, you ever told me what you asked, what, what I asked you for. And now I'm creating and doing things separate. You're like, well, screw you, Diana. You're not making what I asked you to do. And why, why ask if you're not going to do it? I go somebody else that is going to do it. And that's how it is kind of with the camera brands. But I think you still get value. You still may enjoy it, but it's not exactly what you want. And if it's completely not what you want, you don't ever have to come back. It's YouTube. It's your tube. You get to pick what you want. 
Same thing with the camera brands. You do get to pick what you want. There's enough stuff out there. You may have to get different ones to meet different needs. There is no perfect camera yet, or at least perfect YouTuber, a camera yet to everybody's liking or an APS-C version. That's a perfect camera. Um, you know, full frame version that's everybody's favorite cam. You know, there's no nothing like that, but you can get away and meet most of your needs with certain ones. I don't think, I think I agree. I don't think that I agree. I know that I agree with what some people uh, feel when it comes to Nikon in the fact that Nikon's corporate arrogance, so to speak, kind of showing its face here. And I think everybody's responding to that. Whether you love them, whether you plan to try them out, I think once people get them in their hands, like I said, I think once people get them in their hands, they'll they'll like it and they'll deal with some of the limitations. And at least it'll be a B camera, maybe. Or some people use it for an A camera and they're fine with it. They're not, you know, maybe doing some of the work they or whatever, you know, like it, I think it'll work out for some people. I don't think it's what the overwhelming majority wanted or what most people expected. But it's like, does it make business sense to do what they did? Why go through the trouble in asking people? And, um, and then, too, once you develop a user base, I think to the extent of hundreds of years, <laughs> feels like I'm saying hundreds of years, but like however old Nikon is, they celebrate just their 100th, 100th or 101st uh, year in business. You don't get a company that old by... Um, I think decisions like they just made, but I do believe that they maybe should have changed some things about that. Their delivery, the amount of hype that they kicked up in saying that we're going to do a full frame mirror list, but this is not our flagship model yet. And then people can say, okay, and lower the expectations. But when you set expectations so high that you're going to just blow people away and floor them, and I think for the overwhelming majority that you do not, then you come back and say, oh, well, we need to push the push this date back some We figure some stuff out. Uh, oh, the battery. Oh, no, it's not a real, not a real, real battery grip like you used to. It's not. No, it's not one. You ain't got no button. Or nothing. It's just going to help you get extra battery. Hell, I can put two extra batteries in my pocket. You know, <laughs> you know, it's just like, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Stay on track, on track, Diana. <laughs> um. But I just, I just wanted to ask you your opinion. This video, who is video alone? Okay, I want to ask you your opinion. What do you think? One, do you think Nikon dis disappointed their current user base? Two, do you think it makes business sense for them to have done what they have done? And not say that this isn't going to be their flagship camera that this is just them t getting an entry level into mirrorless and they more than likely will have specs that are a few years behind the time from when we first were introduced to that stuff. The first time, you know, cameras were really producing that stuff. And now we're going into, you know, 6K cam sam cameras uh, down sample or sensors down sampled into 4K type stuff, um, you know, not, you know, full sense of readout versus stuff being cropped. You know, we're, we're getting into another level of technological advancement. And so our expectations are at one level and then they produce a product that was our expectations a few years ago. And so I, that's that's my thought process into looking at what they're doing and what they have done. Again, I think they'll be OK cameras. You know, I think people may like them. I really liked the, uh, the M50, much to my surprise. And I did something today that really shocked me. Um, I had the, been doing the series, so I got, like, my stuff set up over there from when I was um, been doing this, this M50 series that I'm getting ready to do for beginners. I took the G85 that was already on the tripod. I took the G85 off the tripod and decide to record with the M50 instead. Does that mean I'm gonna leave Panasonic? No. Does that mean I'm not happy with the G85 anymore? No. But one frustration that I have been having and that most people have with Panasonic cameras is, do I wanna be locked in with um, 
you know, a box this big or whatever, which is fine. It's pretty much most of the screen. But am I concerned? Did the focus move? Did the focus do this or whatever? I said in my last stream when I was using the J85, I'm like, dang, am I in focus or what? You know, but I have to use manual focus when I'm going, um, uh, yeah. For me to go live, I have to use manual focus anyway on the M50. But, you know, it's just like, I don't, and now it's an option. I don't have to worry about that. But I think with what Nikon is doing is they're giving people the option to not choose them when they otherwise may have. And I think that's a mistake uh, on their part when, again, you're saying and advertising as if it's going to be one thing, but then what you produce is going to be something um, less than what people want. I think we always want more than what they're willing to give at that time except for maybe Sony, then the, uh, Sony and maybe Fuji, because Fuji will release firmware updates at least um, to say, oh, we didn't do 120 frames per second at the, oh, here it is, just update the camera. I wish everybody did that. <laughs> but that's my piece. 20 minutes is the limit. I said I was going to talk about this because I got some, had some stuff to get off my chest about it. Even if nobody watches the video, I'll be happy that I got it off my chest. So let me know what your thoughts are if you are into um, one, if you are a photographer, videographer, indie filmmaker, or if you're just an entrepreneur, you have you're asking people to do one thing like stick with me, stick with the brand. Don't leave us. We're getting ready to do something. But then what you do is not what you say you was going to do. People don't even stay married <laughs> to a spouse. When that kind of stuff happened, let alone a brand, when they can just go take that those same dollars, sell that gear, to maybe take a little bit of a loss and go someplace else. Doesn't make the most business sense to me, but perhaps it's just I don't even know. <laughs> but let me know what your thoughts. See you guys in the next video.